All right, so this, this is the website, and it all is arranged by tabs. But we have background information, data and definitions there. If you have to make a presentation and need to try to convince some people that this is a worthy topic and, and there uh, is great need for it, you may find links under that that will help you. That was certainly our intention. Um, screening and identification talks about very te various testing methods, both formal and informal. Um, health provider, oops, darn it, shouldn't have done that. Um, I, training, that's very important because we learned that they don't, that clinics don't have time to have people come in and talk to them about something like this. So, or probably about practically anything. And so, that's all right, undo it so I can see it. Okay. So there are, there are, now can I see it? Yeah, oh, it'll come up, okay. Uh, there are links to sites there with resources that you could direct staff to, that they could go through on their own. Various lengths, various depths, various focuses. Hopefully that would be important and usable. We have a section on how to write readable materials. Those are links out to places that have really done a nice job of putting these kinds of efforts together. We have a link to multimedia health resources that you could actually, you know, actually use, that your nurses, your staff could actually sit down and use with people through the links on that site. We have multi-language resources, disease specific resources that are intended to be very easy for people to use, such as for diabetes or asthma, some of the more, the big chronic diseases. A section on making referrals, and a section on numeracy. The other nice thing about, that I like about this interface in particular, the way that we built this, is that you can leave comments, just like you can on a lot of websites. And if you leave a comment saying, oh, I really like this resource, but did you know about this? A little email message goes to Kate. And then Kate will take a look at it and she will, you know, possibly put that on. So I like that feature of it because it was our hope that this would be one way to bring people together around the issue of health literacy. Um, excuse me, right here in the front row. Did you have a question? I thought you did early on. I did have a question. No, they do not, their family, they have a family history, so they're at risk. And we estimated, we were, we debated as a steering committee whether to specifically recruit overweight and obese children. And we decided not to because given the family history and the environment, most of the youth are at risk. And that was a decision that the community group made together. So they do not have diabetes, but they, given the non-fasting blood glucose reading at a pre-survey, um, they're at risk for pre-diabetes, I would say. And then did you meet like after school hours or where did you? Yes, we met at the community partner sites. Um, we met after school for two hour sessions, um, including healthy snacks, of course. They were involved in serving um, the snacks, choosing the snacks. Um, as we also did food challenges, so we created, um, one of our community partners felt that given pop culture, that's why we named it challenges and not just goal setting, we also have challenges of, uh, related to trying different foods. So we introduced them to different foods that were available at local supermarkets, but that they may not necessarily choose or have been introduced to. Um, we had also brought in um, kind of a, we have one activity called Fearless Food Factor, you know, like a fear factor, where they try very different foods, uh, including kumquats and different things that may not necessarily be available, but, you know, that challenge to try different things. So it all went very well, and they were very excited about these different activities. Are available. It sounded like a lot of it was sort of resources to develop different 
screening or you know rated in mm -hmm. this case because I know there's quite a few of these mm -hmm. websites starting to get populated mm -hmm. and reduced and taking a different approach as mm -hmm. far as you know the rate you know rating scales and mm -hmm. if you could just talk a little bit more about the methodology behind putting it together. Okay. Okay, and the first of those was do we have actual links to things that people could use with people who have literacy issues? Yeah, th those links are there. Under under um, where? under the disease specific accessible resources, those links go to resources that were intended for people with low literacy and also a particular um, condition. There are also links in the multi-language resources to that kind of thing. Um, the multimedia health resources are also links out to resources that you can actually use with people who have literacy challenges. Or English as a second language under the multi-language. So those are built in there. And how did we decide? Well, we didn't have a formal way of evaluating things. But um, I've been a librarian for a long time, and that is one of the things that we do when we select materials for the collection, uh, links for any website that we're working on. And so I, I just tried to use the kind of selection criteria I normally would, such as does it seem to be well taken care of, uh, if there's a bibliography, is it up to date, Who's it coming from? What are the credentials of the groups that are doing it? You know, look at the things individually to see how they look. And I also hope that this comment feature would help us, you know, if, we, if anything was way off the wall. But how did I get leads to these? Mostly from a listserv that is, um, I would have shown it to you. I really would have. Um, probably under health provider training resources, it comes out of the um, National Institute for Literacy, and it's, they have many listservs now, not just one, not just two, I mean now they've got them focused on all sorts of specific areas. But I, I would follow that and I would look at the resources that people were recommending to each other, and of course a lot of comments were made there too. So I didn't feel terribly isolated in the choices that I made. 